Good day folks, this is another question. It's an Eastern Cape, September 2022 question paper. Um, this is an assets and base question. Um, guys, please do not forget to subscribe on my channel, like all my videos and share with your families and friends and also download as well, like all my videos and um, share with your families and friends, download my videos. Guys, just do the right thing. Right, question seven, it says, the equation below shows the reaction occurring in hydrochloric acid, which is HCl, and the ethanoic acid, given the compound the solutions. So we have two reactions of HCl and acetic acid, which is the ethanoic acid. Both acid have the uh, have a concentration of one and kept at um, um, at temperature of twenty five degree um, degrees. Now we have equation one, it's an ionization of HCl, and then we have that, and we're given the Ka value. The Ka value here, if you look at the Ka value, it's greater than one, that means it's a strong acid. Um, we have an acetic acid here, it's ionized, which is dissolved in water, you have those ions, the Ka value is less than one. N naturally, the acid is strong acid this is a strong acid which is this um, hydrochloric acid the acetic acid generally it's a weak acid it's a weak acid even the the equilibrium constant for acids they tell us so um, this is less than one it says it's going to be weak and this is greater than one the Ka is greater than 1, so it's a strong acid, right? Now, define 7.1.1. It defined an acid according to Lori Brownstein theory. Lori Brownstein theory, guys, it's always easy. It's easy. An acid is a proton donor. The acid is a proton donor, right? Now, 7.12. Write down one conjugate acid base pair in the reaction one. Guys, it seems that this is an acid. What remained after it donated a proton there? We call it it's a conjugate base. So this is a conjugate base of that acid. So these two are a pair. So what is formed when the water accepts a proton? This water acts as a base. So what is formed when this water accepts a proton? It becomes an oxonium ion. So this one is a conjugate what? Acid. So those two are pairs as well. So it says get, write down one pair of conjugate base pair in reaction one. So in reaction one, the pair there, it's HCl and um, Cl minus. Or you can say it's water and hydronium ion so those are the pair you can write this or that now 7.1.3 it says which solution one or two have a lower ph the one that has a lower ph is the one that has a stronger that is a stronger acid so the stronger acid between the acetic acid or the ethanoic acid and the hcl is the one that is a strong acid so the it's going to be what reaction one the reason for that you can say hcl is a strong acid than ch3coh alternatively you can say the ka value the ionization constant of acid is greater than one. There are so many reasons for that. So let's move to 7.2. 7.2, it says 10 cubic centimeter of one mole of mole, one mole per cubic centimeter of sodium hydroxide. Um, so this means that this is a volume of a base and this is a concentration of a base um, solution is diluted until its ph is what is a 13. 
so these are the initial values these ones these are the initial values initial values and these are the concentrated values concentrated this is concentrated there now when it's diluted that means it's diluted with water there's an addition of water so until the pH is 13 so this pH is the diluted pH it's a pH of a diluted solution and this is solution one and this is going to be a solution two guys if you want videos on dilution check my other videos they tell you about the dilution of an acid and a base and the dilution calculations there now it says calculated the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in 10 cubic centimeter initial solution you see they tell you as well that's the initial solution so when you want the number of moles of that you need to um, 7.1.2 sorry so you have that volume that volume you need to divide it by 1000 so it's going to be um, 0 0.01 so you use the formula that says c is equal to n over v so you do have the concentration as one you wanted the number of moles um, the volume there it's going to be 0 0.01 so the number of moles of sodium hydroxide the initial initial it's going to be 0 0.01 more right now in 7.2.2 they said calculate the volume of a diluted uh, solution in cubic decimeter in decimeter tube or cubic decimeter so um what do you need to understand here you need to they wonder the volume what will be the volume the volume is 10 now when you dilute it that means the volume is going to be what bigger so it's like this this volume of sodium hydroxide here it's concentrated so when you dilute it that means you adding more water you adding water here you adding water so when you add water here it's going to be a bigger volume so your initial volume which is v1 it's 10 cubic centimeter and the concentration which is c1 is it's one more per dm3 right so now we want this volume what will be this volume two here this new solution when it's diluted you added water of course this it has to have its new concentration as well we do not know what we are given here we are given the ph say the ph is 13 so here let me write it here so what we can do here we can change the ph this ph is 13 we can change it into concentration of the the concentration of this new solution so we can say um we can change that ph by doing an anti-log so what we can do we can say um concentration of h3o plus is equal to 10 to the power negative ph that's an anti-log changing the ph into a concentration 10 to the power negative 13 so we are changing that um, um, ph into concentration so changing that into concentration we get the answer that says 1 times 10 to the power negative 13 more per dm3 that's the concentration of the hydronium iron hydronium iron but now we want the concentration of the sodium hydroxide we go to an ionization constant where it says concentration of hydronium iron multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide iron it's equal they're both the product of them 
they're equal to the power negative 14. So I do have the concentration of this. I want the concentration of that. So what I will do there, I'll say concentration of OH. Okay, I'll substitute what I have. The concentration of hydronium ion, it's 1 times 10 to the power negative 13 multiply by the concentration of hydroxide ion equal to the power negative 13. I divide both by um, the concentration of hydroxide, the hydroxide ion, the hydronium ion. Um, so what will be, it will be the concentration. So by that, I'm getting the concentration of OH. OH minus, so the answer there, it will be 0 0.1 mole per dm3. So now, having the concentration of OH, how is it going to help me? Now, you need to, the base that we're talking about here, it's a sodium hydroxide. So I need to dissolve the sodium hydroxide in water. So when I dissolve it, I'll have the sodium ion plus the OH minus. So now what I have, this concentration is the concentration of that, but I'm looking for the concentration of this in the new solution. So if you're looking at this equation, it's balanced. So therefore that means the ratio here is one is to one. So this simply means the concentration of sodium hydroxide is equivalent to the concentration of OH minus the one that we have. So therefore, this means the concentration of sodium hydroxide is equivalent to 0, uh, 0, 0,1 mole per dm3. Now we have the concentration of the new solution, but we want the volume. So when we want the volume, we will use, um, we will use the formula that says C is equal to N over V, right? C is equal to N over V. So what are we going to do? We're going to substitute the concentration. The concentration is this. It's 0 0.1. And the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide, remember, they do not change. In the new solution, in the, new, in the old solution and the new solution, it will be the same. Here in this solution and here in this solution, it will be the same. So it won't change. So the one that we calculated initially, it was 0 0.0.1. So we'll use that one. It doesn't change even if it's, it's diluted. 0 0.01 divided by the volume. And then we cross multiply the So V, it's going to be 0 0.1 um, D M three it's going to be dm3 because um, we'll substitute the concentration and that is more per dm3 so the answer will be dm3 so that's the that's the way to calculate that there are so many ways to do that so alternatively you can see here having um, the ph um, from this step here from this step, having the concentration of hydronium ion by doing it an antilog. So having this concentration there, you can use the formula, um, the POH formula. But the POH formula, um, it's not in the data sheet. So what you can do there, from having this concentration, you can you can um, go to this step as well, to this step. Um, having the OH there. Um, okay, from this, what you can do, you have the pH, you can use the formula that says pH plus POH is equal to 14. It's not in the formula sheet, this. So you have a pH is 13 plus the POH you do not know so this formula it's going to give you the POH POH is going to be 14 minus 13 is equal to 1 so the answer is going to be 1 there so 
having this POH, how is it going to help you? It's going to help you to get the concentration of OH minus. You can say POH is equal to negative log concentration of OH minus. You take the POH there. So you get the concentration by doing an antilog as well. The concentration of OH minus is equal to 10 to the power negative pH. And then 10 to the power negative, it's going to be 10 to the power negative. Um, what is our, it's not going to be pH. It's going to be POH. 10 to the power negative, what is our POH? It's 1. So the answer here, it's going to be for the concentration of OH is going to be 0 0.1 mole per dm3. Now that we have that concentration, we can, we can, we have the concentration of OH now. So since you know the ratio, it's going to be between the concentrate, the, the, the ratio of sodium hydroxide and the ratio of OH minus from this equation. From this equation, it's going to be one is to one. So this simply means that the concentration of sodium hydroxide, it's going to be 0 0.1 mole per dm3. Per dm3, since the ratio it's one is to one. So I have the, the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So I can go to the dilution formula and say C1 V1 is equal to C2 V2. So C1, this is the concentrated one. And this one, this is the diluted one. So the concentrated one, what is my concentration there? My concentration that I was given, it was what? Um, the, vo the the concentration it was a zero po it was one and uh, the the initial one it was one the concentration and the volume was zero point zero one concentration is one and the volume initial volume it was ten but when you divide it by thousand it's going to be zero point zero one and the new concentration new concentration is this one it's going to be zero point one and the volume, which is V2, the one that we want, when we divide by 0 0.1, we divide by 0 0.1 both there. Our V2 there, it's going to be 0 0.1 dm3. It's the same. 